I'll start by asking you a question. Anybody out there had a mare that's had a hydrops? Okay, yeah, it's actually quite rare, so that's a lottery you don't want to win, so um, I'm sorry that that number came up for you. So probably the first thing that you're going to notice is the mare gets a little bit larger than she's supposed to um, at the stage in gestation that you think, but it will caution you the differentials for this. Uh, maybe there's some um, displaced gut there, uh, maybe an enlarged cecum. The other one is twins, which we, as we heard before is much less likely than it used to be, but it's always on my mind when I see a mare come into me like this with a diagnosis of a hydrops. Um, having a look here, you can actually sort of see um, they look a little bit large um, in profile and um, often you'll actually sort of see they are uh, very distended here ventrally also. Sometimes you notice um, a little bit of a difference in their fecal consistency, sometimes they get a bit loose. Um, also you can sometimes see some swelling along their ventral abdomen. Now an ultrasound, this is when it gets interesting and this is when your veterinarian will sort of say, oh dear, and you'll see the look in their face change a little bit because here basically instead of looking at a foal, we're actually looking at Lake Superior because all you actually see is a lot of fluid and the fetus should be actually on the bottom of the uterus and the horn and all we just sort of see is fluid. And the depth is actually quite increased. This is like 30 centimetres or so, which is about double what you'd expect to see in a pregnant mare. So um, the question is, high drops, so what went wrong? And I, I sort of, not saying this essentially, but enough. And we often see placentas that have some compromise to them and everything's fine. But um, there's two real types uh, that actually occur. There's this high drops allantois that I described there, which is a placental abnormality. And um, there's a high drops amnion, which tends to be an abnormality of the fetus. And I look back over our records, you know, we see probably between one and three of these um, every year. And our age range was like four to 14, which is pretty close to what's in the literature. And the number of foals that it had ranged from one to eight. I mean, I actually had a maiden mare that did this, and I've had mares that have actually had a lot of foals that have done this as well. So where does all that fluid come from? Well, the fetal fluids that we see actually come from two sources. And when the mare breaks the water, that's actually the allantoic fluid. And you can think about that as fetal urine. And where that's really coming from is the mare's pumping a lot of blood into this fetus, um, goes in through the umbilical cord, and the fetus is actually essentially urinating that out. And it actually goes into the allantoic cavity. And what's essential here is that the mare's placenta is competent to actually absorb all of that fetal urine or the fluid component of it back into her system so the whole, whole cycle can go again. And these mares actually come on quite rapidly. So if you've seen your mare um, it, sometime during gestation suddenly get rapidly very quickly, if it's a high drops, it'll be the high drops allantois. Uh, the high drops um, amnion, the, the fetal fluids there, actually come from the lungs and they're secreted and the foal swallows that fluid during pregnancy and that's actually what forms the meconium. Uh, the volume of that is a lot less, usually it's like 3 to 8 litres as opposed to the 8 to 18 in the allantoic fluid, but sometimes that can be greatly increased. But these ones come on much, much more slowly, more progressively, and they're a little bit harder to diagnose compared to the other ones. And this fluid, again, it's supposed to be swallowed by the fetus in utero, but if there's any facial deformities especially or any issues uh, with that fetal uh, development generally, uh, you can get that hydrops uh, um, amnion. So again, placental issue with hydrops allantois, fetal issue with hydrops amnion. So here's a couple of diagrams here, sort of basically explaining what's going on. You know, obviously you've probably seen pregnancies in your mares. It's, it's sort of nice and spherical and we're scanning them later on things sort of start to stretch out a little bit here, but what I want to uh, draw your attention to is this diagram here. And these are the attachments between the placenta and the endometrium. They're actually very intimate. Um, there actually a lot of exchange goes on there. And the membranes itself are actually sort of very vascular. So this is what we want to see about 240 days, fetus sitting on its back, just waiting for the miracle of life to occur and be delivered. But unfortunately, things don't always go that way. So when things do go wrong, these are considerations if we're presented with a case of hydrops um, allantois or sometimes very rarely hydrops amnion. The biggest problem is to actually recognise it. And in the literature, most of the time they come across between five and seven months gestation, but often we'll actually see them quite late. And the later ones, people actually try, if they're like 320 days or so, they try to actually uh, support the mare's abdomen because the abdomen is getting stretched and um, support the weight there. When we're managing these, we want to make sure that uh, we've got the cervix well dilated so there's no damage to the cervix. You heard about that, it can happen before. The main problem with the mare is shock. 
and there's a lot of fluid loading that needs to go on during this procedure, we can give them a lot of fluids. The placenta can be retained sometimes, and sometimes we've got trou trouble with the uterus closing over. So here's some pictures here. Uh, we've got some fluids running into this mare. We're all standing around. Some people do them in stocks. I like to do them in the stall. Um, you'll, if you've got like 80-20 vision, you'll notice they have a tube there to try to let the fluid out slowly. We catch that. Sometimes they produce some, and you've got to let them go and um, expel that. Uh, you'll grab the fetus, pull the fetus out. Sometimes it doesn't come the way you want it to. And then sometimes you're actually getting this and you're saying, sorry, um, you've actually had a squid because this is not viable and we have to um, use the nasal fetus. So um, the placenta is abnormal, grossly abnormal if you've seen them before. You'll notice, especially here on the right, very, very thick placenta here and there's no way that's going to absorb fluid properly. You can see grossly things don't uh, look right there as well. So just really uh, the questions you asked, what about breeding it back? Will this happen again? We don't know. The jury's out. In our records, half have been successfully rebred. Some of them have had multiple foals. And what if I do nothing? Body wall rupture um, can be extreme danger to the mare uh, when she loses all that fluid quickly if we don't get the chance to let it out progressively. And she can actually die because some of these have up to 200 litres of fluid that come out. It's very, very difficult for the mare. Thank you.